Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, we've done pretty much uh, everything. Let's see, we've done uh, Christ being God, Christ being man, the Holy Spirit being God. Now we're going to touch on God the Father. Now I'll admit the Godhead is not, it's not an easy thing to understand. You know, but let's face it, the difference between Christianity and other religions is other religions teach that man, especially the Eastern religions like Hinduism and what have you, they teach that man can become one with God, the force. May the force be with you, Luke. But uh, they will deny that God could become man. And that's what Christianity is all about. Christ, God became man. And let's face it, if that's why the virgin birth is so important. Mary's fallen genetics was not used. You know, Christ is called the last Adam. You know, the first Adam, well, maybe we should take a look at some of this stuff. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll take a look at some of this stuff. But the um, Adam is actually called the Son of God. Because after all, who was his mother and father? I mean, you know, you could say Mother Earth because his body was formed of the dust of the earth. But God was his father. He had the same father as the angels. Of course, he was a different type of creation than the angels. And then you've got uh, Christ, which is always in the King James is called the only begotten son begotten of the same essence as of the Father, but in human form. It's complicated. I mean, I, I, you know, I can show you the Bible verses. That don't mean I understand it, but uh, we're going to take a look. All right, let's go take a look at Colossians chapter 2. Paul was in Colo uh, wrote this to the people that lived in Colossae. You know, if you lived in New York City, they'd call you a New Yorker, right? So, you know, if you live in Florida, they call you a Floridian. If you live in California, you're a Californian. If you live in Texas, you're a Texan. So, let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Uh, Laodicea was, uh, <laughs> that was that problem, church, in uh, Revelation, I think it's chapter 2. It's either Revelation 1 or 2. I'm pretty sure it's Revelation 2. Laodicea did not like the book of Revelation because John wrote and said that they were wretched. Yeah, you are you got money and you think you're doing so great, but really you're wretched. So, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. So evidently he's just writing them a letter, right? that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all the riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement 
of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. See, there's a mystery there. Christ is not the Father, but yet he's one with the Father. You know, they. one of the apostles said, Lord, show us the Father. And I'm paraphrasing. We'll probably read this. Uh, he says, well, he says, have I been with you so long? You know, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Another time, Christ told the you-know-whos, I and my Father are one. I mean, that was, woo, dog. They didn't like that one. All right, well, in John 5, Jesus heals a man. So let's read uh, verse 14, John 5, 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, you know, the one that he healed, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Yeah, it was Jesus. He healed me. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Woo! Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. See, Jesus and the Father, you know, people don't understand that when Christ was praying to the Father, he was setting an example to us in the flesh. And as long as Christ was in the flesh, he was subservient to the Father. I, you know, it's not an easy thing to understand. So let's go back to Laodice, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Colossians 2, verse 2. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the fear, full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. How can they be different but yet one? It's a mystery of God. And I wish I could explain it better, but I can't. I could just show you the verses in the Bible. Verse 3, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. What does beguile mean? Beguile is a very interesting word. It has many shades of meaning. It means to trick, deceive, 
seduce. Sometimes spiritually, sometimes it can mean physically being seduced. I mean, if you were uh, talking about a young woman who was deflowered by, if you catch my drift, by a man, you could use this in a sentence. You could say the um, handsome, rich young man beguiled the young virgin with the promise of marriage. In other words, uh, she didn't wait until her wedding night. You know, they uh, the horse left the barn, you know. But uh, that's another way of using the word beguiled. Beguiled has many shades of meaning in the English and in the Hebrew. It's a very interesting word. So, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. You know, don't let him seduce you. Don't let him deceive you. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Well, that's what uh, the Greeks were famous for. You've heard of Greek philosophers, Aristotle, uh, Plato, you know, that's what they were famous for. Uh, I'm sure there's more of them, but uh, Aristotle and Plato, you know. Were they Christians? Not my book. But, uh, you know, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain or worthless deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Not after Christ. What's the subject? Christ. Verse 9, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Think about that. Pause on that for a second. And not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He was God in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Back to Colossians. Verse 9, for in him, Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Christ was God in the flesh, but he's not the Father. How can that be? It's a mystery. I, if I understood it, I'd explain it better, but I can't. I mean, they're separate, but they're one. Just like you're a man or a woman, you have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. And your body's not your soul. Your body's not your spirit. And your soul is not your spirit. You're made up of three different parts. When your body dies, your soul is still around. You know, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and some other people will teach soul sleep, but it's not biblical. You could read in Revelation where the, the souls of those who were beheaded for the uh, witness of Jesus in the end times, their souls are under the altar and they're crying out to God for vengeance. 
How long, O Lord, holy and true, till thou would judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? I'm probably paraphrasing there. Let's take a look. And that, everybody, is in Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Well, it says, Under the altar were the souls of them that were slain, and they cried with a loud voice. How can soul sleep be true if they're crying with a loud voice? It's not. Read in Luke. I don't remember what chapter, but uh, Abraham's bosom. Lazarus, um, the rich man, was having a conversation with Abraham. Crying about, uh, please send Lazarus so he can dip his tip of his finger in the, some water and put it on my tongue because I'm burning in this flame. Yeah. Oh, well, that was just a parable, Chaplain Bob. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Abraham and Lazarus were talked, called by name. Jesus doesn't give names to parables. And even if it was a parable, the rich man was crying out in pain from the flames. You can parable that and explain it away all you want, like the Jehovah's Witnesses do. But what can I tell you? It's a mystery. You got a body and you got a soul. Your body dies, but your soul doesn't. Your soul doesn't die. You're three parts, but you're one. God's three parts, but he's one. It's a mystery. And I'll be honest, I don't, I don't understand this that well. Colossians 2.9, For in him Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. God wants us to be circumcised in the spirit, in the heart, not uh, snip, snip with a pair of scissors or whatever they use. That's, that's not what circumcision the Lord wants. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. The sins of the flesh. Buried with him in baptism. Buried also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Oh, well, what, was it? what do you mean trespasses? You know, when you're in the wrong place, you're trespassing. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Uh, people, ordinances are not laws. I mean, well, they are, but how do I put this? You know what an ordinance was? One of the ordinances in the Old Testament, the book of, Le I think it's in Leviticus, was not to wear clothing of different fabrics. 
don't wear cotton with uh, wool. Now, I'm not talking about a piece of cotton shirt with a wool sweater. I'm not, no, no. I'm talking about woven in the same fabric. Did you know that's a no-no in the Bible? Did you know that having fun with your uh, wife during the time of the month was a no-no? Yeah. Uh, if you were, uh, if it was a, a feast day coming up like Tabernacles or Passover, and you touched a dead body by accident. Let's say you tripped and fell on the ground and your hand touched a, a dead bird. Well, you had to wash yourself ceremonially and then I believe you couldn't attend Passover. You had to wait until there was like a 30-day makeup Passover or something. I'm not a Levite priest. I mean, I've read through this stuff, but I'm not an expert on it. I'm familiar with it. I, I'm what you call a generalist. I like if I was a medical doctor, I would be a, a general, a general, a general doctor. I think they call them GPs, general practitioners, in the U.S. Yeah, I mean I know a little bit about everything, and and if if something comes up, I know where to look to dig deeper to get a specific answer on a specific. Uh, in-depth topic but you know there's churches out there that'll tell you that the Ten Commandments were nailed to the cross well Jesus changed the Ten Commandments to the two commandments love the Lord and love thy neighbor and like I've said a thousand times if you live next door to a bunch of Satanists I suggest you move or get rid of them you know that works too, but uh, the state will uh, probably give them more rights than you. So probably best to just move, you know. But the two commandments, and uh, tell you what, I'll take a look at a couple things. Uh, so somebody asked Jesus what was the most important commandment and Jesus said Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37 Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets and if you go to a Seventh-day Adventist church, they'll say, well, you got to keep the Sabbath. Got to keep that Sabbath. Got to keep that Sabbath. See, they'll try to get you to keep the Ten Commandments. No. We don't need to keep the Ten Commandments. We need to keep the Two Commandments. Believe it or not. In Acts 15... After Christ had been resurrected from the dead, verse 27, we have sent before Judas and Silas, who also shall tell you the same thing by mouth, for it seemed good by the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols. So if somebody offers uh, food to Satan, probably a good idea not to partake of it. And from blood, you know, don't be eating or drinking blood. That's a good idea, you know. And what is Hollywood's obsession now? Vampires. Oh boy, uh, have you ever seen that? Um, I think it's a movie or TV thing, uh, Underworld. What's her name? Um, I can't think of her name. She's a hottie. But uh, she's the star. She's a fighter. And, uh, you know, uh, they're fighting the, the lichens or uh, the werewolves. And uh, 
you know, she's the star of the show. I can't even think of her name. I'd have to look it up. I think her Kate Breckenridge, I think her name is. I had to think about that. But, uh, you know, vampires, they drink blood. And, and vampires are really cool. You know, they hang out all night and then they sleep during the day. And, um, you know, they drink that blood and they live forever as long as they have blood. And, you know, stay away from that garlic and, you know, a stake to the heart and stay out of the sunlight. Uh, you know, and they, <laughs> you know, live forever being a vampire. Hey, you don't need Jesus, just drink blood, like, uh, yeah, like a lot of the, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of politicians that do that. So, we're told not to do it. It's Satanism. So, Paul writes, I think it's Paul, that you abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, that must be some kind of satanic ritual that I'm not familiar with and from fornication guys stay away from those women bad news now we're not talking about your wife from which if ye keep yourselves ye shall do well fare ye well so don't eat things offered to idols blood drinking eating things strangled and uh, stay away from, well, you know, the women stay away from guys too, right? Get married. That's what Paul said. Hey, if you can't contain yourself, get married. You know, there's no condemnation when you're married. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. And when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, the letter. And then in Acts 21, 25, as touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from stangled and from fornication. And uh, guess what? If you go to a Seventh-day Adventist church, they'll, oh, no, no, you got to keep the Sabbath. You got to keep the Sabbath. Oh, you got to keep the Sabbath. Uh, what was her name? Um, not Mary Ellen Baker, Baker, but the other one. Uh, Ellen White. Ellen, Ellen White or Ellen White. Uh, she, went to, she went to heaven and she's looking at the Ten Commandments and the, the Sabbath was just glowing. And then she came back and told everybody, oh, we got to keep the Sabbath. You know... I mean, generally, I, you know, I do my Bible studies on the Sabbath, but of course I do them almost every day. But yeah, but uh, nothing wrong with keeping the Sabbath, but uh, the Seventh-day Adventists teach, well, you know, you got to believe in Jesus and keep the Sabbath. So I don't think so. All right, Colossians 2.14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. I heard that there were 600-something laws, ordinances, statutes and ordinances. And uh, if you broke one of them, you were guilty. Guilty. So Jesus whittled it down to two. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. You know, don't drink, be drinking blood. Stay away from fornication, things strangled, and uh, food sacrificed or offered to uh, Satan. You do that, hey, you got it made. You got it well. You're doing okay. Verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers. What are they talking about? Uh, this is the hierarchy of the fallen angels, principalities and powers. We're talking about, you know, there's uh, ranks of, of angels. Believe it or not, Satan was a, a you know, he was a, um, a cherub. Michael's an archangel. 
there's a uh, there's ranks just like in the army you got the general you got the colonel the major the captain the lieutenant the sergeant the corporal and the private and the private is the dog the the they call them uh what do they call them grunts whatever yeah so and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it christ triumphed over the fallen angels let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of a new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. But uh, let no man let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Yeah, don't be worshiping angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together, increased with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subjects subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Oh, boy. Christ blasted the Pharisees for uh, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In Matthew 15 and verse 9, Jesus said, But in vain, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Second witness, Mark 7, 7. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Titus 1, 14. Not giving heed... You know, don't pay attention, not giving heed to Jewish fables, Jewish fables, and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Okay. Let's go back to Colossians 2.20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as through living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances, Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Uh, you know, there you go. Christ, uh, you know, he's separate from the Father, but he's one with him. And if you get that figured out, let me know. Because <laughs> I'd like to know too. But God can be everywhere, right? I mean, he's in heaven above. He's in earth below. He's watching what we're all doing. I mean, uh, they try to make Santa Claus to be like uh, God the Father. You know, he knows, he knows where you've been naughty or nice, right? I mean, uh, or is it Satan Claus? Satan's Claus, or is it Santa Claus? I forget. Oh, I love this. John chapter 14. I've done... I, I used to do uh, funerals at the... Um, uh, Florida Veterans Cemetery and you know I use this uh, chapter a lot John chapter 14 
Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2. In my Father's house are many tiny apartment buildings. No. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and hast thou, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Maybe that's why they always want to change the name of Jesus to Yeshua HaMashiach. Because they don't want you to be able to do, they don't want your prayer to be answered. Gabriel went to Mary and Joseph and said, His name is Jesus. They have no authority to change it to Yeshua. Zero. The New Testament was written in Greek. And that's why they're doing this. That's why they're pushing this Yeshua stuff. They want your prayers not to be answered. Think about it. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor, right? Verse 16, and I will pray the Father. Christ in the flesh will pray to the Father. And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Who's the Spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, and ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, 
and will manifest myself to him. Verse 22. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot. There's two of them. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we, and we, and we, Christ and the Father, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Wow. You want to know how the New Testament was written? The Holy Ghost taught them and brought things to remembrance. And you got all these worldly idiots that'll say, well, you know, the Bible was written years after Christ was uh, died and they, you know, those records can't possibly be true. Yeah. Yeah, keep listening to the rabbi. Verse 27. Peace I leave unto you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, Ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto, unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Yeah. I'm sure in the flesh the Father is greater than him. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me. Who's the prince of this world? Uh, take a guess. Satan and the devil. Verse 31. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. John chapter 14. What a beautiful chapter. All right, well, I'm going to do one more on God the Father. One more. I think one more. One more should do it. And then we'll be done with this series. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.